Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are playing Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Game Boy Advance. So this one I've been looking forward to doing a video on because um, I got some memories on this one. Of course, Street Fighter 2 is of course just the most awesome fighting game ever. And of course, like my previous videos, I am actually playing on my modded Wii U emulated. And yes, I do have my Street Fighter 2 copy handy on my Game Boy Advance. Which, of course, here is my cartridge. And I am actually going to compare it against the Sega Saturn version of the game, not the Super Nintendo or Genesis version of the game. And the reason I'm doing that is because the Saturn version was a little more faithful to the arcade. And again, this is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, not Super Street Fighter 2 which is, you know, so many different ridiculous variations of Street Fighter 2. But toward the end of the video, I'm actually going to do, like, a comparison. I'll show, like, uh, the the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis version here. So I'll kind of have all four versions of one of some of the games. But anyway, uh, just a quick uh, FYI. The Game Boy Advance, because it only had four buttons, the A and the B and the L and the R, the Street Fighter 2 games used six buttons, which, of course, the Genesis and the Saturn controller was perfect for it because it had three buttons, uh, two rows of three buttons for six face buttons. So the way they got around it in this game, and they did a really good job with it, I was really, really happy with it, is if you go down to button configuration, you can actually set it up however you want. Like, you can, like, tap a button, you could kind of press it and not really hold it, but, like, you know, if you press it and kind of, like, uh, Hold it down for just like a split second, or uh, I think there's a way to do. Um, I think there's a way to like do like multiple combinations of buttons, but I think that's this is the way to do it here. I mean, it it, it um, doesn't look like there's a way to hit like multiple buttons at once. I thought there was, but I might be thinking Street Fighter Alpha. But anyway, like light punch, I'm going to tie to the A button, and it's just going to be tapping it. Uh, medium punch, I'm going to uh, tie to the R button. And then heavy punch, I'm going to tie to A and hold it. So we're going to get to it. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing with kick. So B, just tapping it. And medium kick, we're going to hit L, just pressing L. And then heavy kick, or roundhouse, press B, uh, press B long, almost like holding it. Go to exit, we're going to go to arcade mode. And they added a lot of really cool, neat graphics for this. I'm not going to play Ryu because Ryu is like my favorite uh, Street Fighter 2 character. And this, of course, is the speed. I'm just going to play it on normal speed because I'm more used to World Warrior and Champion Edition. But like if you see me just kind of tapping it, it does a light kick. But if I just kind of hold it, I don't even have to hold it very long. It's just like it's just like, like a quick, like a almost like a button mash. It'll do like a stronger attack. So it does really, really well. I mean, it emulates that six button feel on four face buttons really, really well. Of course, because this is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, it has those little extra power moves, which I was never really a fan of. But that's okay. And this game, they added a, like a lot more graphics. Um, backgrounds and and kind of more optimized for the resolution of the Game Boy Advance versus the Super Nintendo or PlayStation Saturn hardware. There we go. Of course the first match is always the easiest. But uh, story about how uh, I picked up this game. Of course the Saturn version I'm playing on the left side which is pre-recorded. Um, Japanese copy by the way. But um, the, it's got the loading time, so you're going to see now loading on it. <laughs> of course, there wasn't really loading on cartridge versions. But backstory on how I picked this game up. Um, when the Game Boy Advance came out, I was kind of excited for this game, but I was really excited for Mortal Kombat Advance because I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. And if you played Mortal Kombat Advance on the Game Boy Advance and hearing me say that, you know where I'm going with this. Um, Mortal Kombat Advance was a horrible piece of crap. 
I mean, Mortal Kombat 1 on Super Nintendo was okay. I think it's better than the Genesis version. That's my opinion. But Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3 on Super Nintendo, and Genesis were both great. Um, so I was expecting Mortal Kombat Advance on the Game Boy Advance because the Game Boy Advance was a much more powerful uh, hardware than the Super Nintendo. I'm like, oh, this will be really good on the Game Boy Advance. And it was a god-awful piece of crap. It was horrible. It was horrible to control. It was, the graphics were crappy. Um, I don't, I don't know who made it, but whoever made it uh, did such a horrible job. I was so disappointed that I actually was able to talk to Walmart into giving me my money back on the game. <laughs> uh, I, I was able to convince them I bought the wrong one. Actually, I shouldn't say I got my money back. I got, I got it exchanged for a different game. I told them I was so, I was so mad at the game. I was so mad at how it turned out. Um, that I took it, I took it back to Walmart. I told him I got the wrong game, and I was able to sweet talk him into exchanging it for a different game. In which I'm like, well, um, I'll get this game because I kind of want a fighting game on the Game Boy. Hopefully, this game is not as bad as Mortal Kombat Advance. And I looked at the the reviews on it, and the reviews were pretty good on this one, which I really should have looked up the reviews on Mortal Kombat Advance. But anyway, I exchanged it. Uh, Popped it, went in my car, didn't even wait till I get home. I mean, I, I popped it in my Game Boy, in my car, and played it right away. And I was amazed how much better this game was than Mortal Kombat Advance. It made me even more mad of how bad Mortal Kombat Advance was in the Game Boy Advance. Because this, even though it only has four buttons, it still plays like Street Fighter 2. It still plays like the arcade version, like the Super Nintendo version, the PlayStation, the Saturn version. It still plays feels like you're playing those older versions. So, I mean, it's such a good game on Game Boy Advance. So, if, if you had a chance, if, if you were um, a gamer back then, I mean, if, if you were born at that time, I mean, I'm 42 years old, so this was like my after high school, college years. <laughs> so, for us, this was uh, pretty advanced back then. But, um, if you play this when it came out, when this was like the only way to play Street Fighter 2 in a portable way, it was amazing. I was really happy with this game. And I played the absolute crap out of it. So this was a great way to play Street Fighter 2 on the go. Again, I wish it was um, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, but of course they did the, they did the later and greater version. And they also did uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 on the Game Boy Advance, which was pretty good. I'm not a fan of the Street Fighter Alpha series. I'm more of just Street Fighter 2 fan. Like I said, Champion Edition is my favorite version of the game. Because it's the one that I played the most in the arcades. But Turbo was still good. As long as I could play it with like normal speed. That's one of the problems I had with uh, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 uh, ports when they released that is it was the sped up versions and I just didn't like the sped up versions a lot. So this is one of the backgrounds they didn't really change too much but a lot of the backgrounds and stages are all new uh, stages just to kind of a little more uh, stages that are have resolution to optimize for the Game Boy Advance. Of course, the Game Boy Advance runs at a much lower resolution, which I kind of already mentioned earlier. Throw a slow fireball. And throw a fast one. There we go. That took him out. Of course, the Saturn runs at a much higher frame rate than even the Super Nintendo and Genesis version, so you got a lot more detail on the Saturn version of the game on the left side than the Game Boy Advance version. But then again, I mean, the screen was only that small. And the Game Boy Micro was even smaller, which I still got right here. Can I hold those up side by side here? So even though it ran at a smaller resolution, it was such a small screen you didn't really quite notice that much. So it, it definitely, it definitely. Uh, fit the game. And again, I think they should have made the Game Boy Advance native resolution the same as the Super Nintendo. I think that would have helped out with more Super Nintendo ports. 
Because, I mean, again, like I mentioned in my past Game Boy Advance videos, that's what sold me on the Game Boy Advance, was getting, uh, being able to play games that I played on Super Nintendo on the go. Oh, I'm doing horrible. Try to get the Dragon Punch in there. And after a couple more matches, I'll kind of show like a little comparison of the Genesis and Super Nintendo version. Oh, 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 he's hugging me. Oh, he's hugging me. Got me in the bear hug. Nice, nice, come on. Oh, I still got the throw. I thought I ruined it there. When all else fails is Ryu, just throw fireballs. Yeah, I actually pulled that one out. But man, I mean, Street Fighter 2, when that came out on the arcades, I mean, that that revitalized arcades in the United States. I don't know how it did in Japan, but arcades were kind of declining a little bit. I mean, they, they weren't like going away yet, but you know, they weren't really seeing as much gameplay. And then this game was pretty much designed for it was basically designed to suck quarters but make you make you want to empty out your quarters in the game because <laughs> every time you lose you got to pump another quarter in to keep playing it was you know winner gets to keep playing loser basically doesn't get to play anymore and has to pump in another quarter if they want to keep playing so it was it was very competitive Street Fighter 3 I didn't really play a lot of I wasn't a fan of I mean it's great great game Street Fighter 3 is awesome but I just wasn't a fan of it. Uh, Street Fighter 4 was okay. I mean, again, 4 is a great game, but I just wasn't like a huge fan of it. Street Fighter 2 is my favorite game out of all of them. 5, I think, kind of sucks. I, I didn't even bother buying 5. There we go. And of course, the first game is just god awful. <laughs> Which, I actually have the Street Fighter collection on the Nintendo Switch. And it has all of them, like 1, 2, and 3. And I'm surprised they never released uh, Street Fighter 4 on Switch. Capcom wasn't really keen on supporting the Switch early on. They just kind of like released a couple uh, games like, oh, okay, let's release this and see how well it does. And they were almost like surprised how well their games did on Switch. It's funny, like a lot of these older game companies like Konami and Capcom, they kind of make weird decisions when it comes to supporting, like making remakes or new games and stuff like that. They're just, their heads, their heads just not in the game. It's really weird. I mean, Konami's a big one. They focus on like the Japanese gambling machines. I forget what they're called. Which, you know, it's, it's fine if they're going to do what makes them money, but, you know. Here you have a, pr a plethora of video game IP, at the very least they can license out. And, and they're, they're starting to do that a little bit. I'm going to throw a firewall, I keep doing dragon punches by accident. And you see I'm kind of like trying to get the hang of uh, playing with four buttons again. Just because I haven't played the Game Boy version in so long. But I'm actually doing really well now I've kind of those, after those first couple matches. Like I said, it's, it's, it's four buttons instead of six. And there's different variations of, of how you can set it up. You know, tapping a button, holding a button, things like that. 
So they did a really good job. Because I remember my when I picked this up and I tried to get my friend Scott to play it. And he kept griping about the game. He goes, that's so stupid. And why, why would they make Street Fighter 2 on Game Boy Advance? There's only four buttons. It sucks. And I tried to explain to him. like, no, they, they did a really good job making adapting the game to only four buttons. And I can never give him get him to give the game a try. I don't know if he eventually did. Of course, the Saturn version of Street Fighter 2 is really good. It's one of those games that when I had a Saturn back in the mid to late 90s, before I got rid of it, that I wish I knew it existed. Because I would have bought it and played the absolute crap out of it. <laughs> now, of course, you can see this stage here that kind of redid the stage for the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, this stage they did, the Guile stage they did, uh, Chun Li stage they did, uh, I think Ken's stage, I don't remember. Throw a slow one. There we go. Always pick him out with the slow and the fast. Yeah, the loading times on the Saturn version of this game didn't really affect it that much because it was only in between stages. It didn't affect the actual gameplay. But I think there was a slight resolution difference between the Saturn and the arcade version compared to the, the PlayStation version, which I didn't even know the PlayStation version came out until way later. It was like a Cap Capcom uh, collection or something like that. Let's keep my distance and stick with the fireballs. Playing it safe here. There we go. So I don't know if it's, I think it's missing a little bit of resolution, like it's stretched out or, or compressed or something. Of course it kind of has a stretched out look because that's how my frame meister was set up to play it at the time. It was more based on uh, Pixel integer scaling. I don't have my Frame Meister anymore. I got the OSSC. But now that uh, Mike Chi is coming out with a 5X uh, Retro Tink, I'm actually more excited to use that now. I'm real curious to see how that's gonna how that's gonna play next the OSSC. Originally, I used the Frame Meister over the OSSC because the OSSC did not have a HDMI output but also it kind of fit my setup a little bit more at the time because I didn't have a lot of... Um, I, I was still using some S-Video devices. And then when they came out with the OSSC 1.6, uh, I eventually switched over. And that was after I recorded a lot of the footage that you're seeing on my um, Game Boy Advance comparison videos. The unfortunate thing is, after I did that, my capture device does not support the OSSC very well. It'll capture at 4x, but it won't capture any, or it'll capture at 2x, but it won't capture anything higher than 2x. So I gotta replace my capture card. I'm just too dang cheap to do it. Ah. <laughs> oh. Darn. Of course, uh, this stage they didn't change. It's it's the same stage from the other versions. So if I beat a Balrog on the Saturn version, you'll see a side by side comparison here. Of course, uh, the Japanese versions of Street Fighter, Balrog was called M. Bison as a reference to Mike Tyson. And Vega was called, uh, Vega was called Balrog and Bison was called Vega. 
Oh, they got him? Yes, I got him. Can I pause it real quick? Nope, I won't let me pause it. I was hoping it didn't let me do a side by side. That's okay. Cool little backgrounds there. Of course, this stage here is kind of the same as the, the other versions. But the bison stage, they made that way different. Ooh, I am dizzy. Saget is beating the heck out of me. I think Saget was the final boss of um, the first Street Fighter game. Okay, pull this one out. Nope. Of course, the BT just laughs at you. And the story, Sagan has that big scar on his chest because of Ryu uh, hitting him with the dragon punch. There we go, got a little combo there. Everyone wonders what I'm drinking. I'm drinking uh, sparkling water from Costco. I'm trying to cut down on my soda intake. I can still kind of drink something carbonated. It's lemon flavored. And I actually squirted a little lemon juice in it as well. Of course, it does the tiger uppercut, which is is rip off of the dragon punch. Got him? Yes, got him with a special move. Got him with a special finish. It's kind of a cool background there. <laughs> of course, now we are at M. Bison. Here you'll see a much different background. Almost like that evil, evil villain layer. <laughs> it's almost re reminiscent of the, the movie. Get up and move and throw him. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a, not a fan of the music on this version of the game. I mean, it just it doesn't the quality of the music doesn't really hold up in my opinion. I mean, it does okay. It almost sounds like an NES game. Of course, a lot of those early Game Boy Advance games, they didn't quite have the music developing software down. That's okay, it's, it's, it's still good. There we go, finish him with the Dragon Punch. <laughs> uh, Of course, it kind of shows like a little art background for the ending. It's kind of cool. I like that. They did a good job with it. Of course, the Game Boy Advance cartridges had a lot more uh, uh, digital space than the Super Nintendo Genesis versions uh, did at the time. So you're kind of able to show off a little more uh, backgrounds and things like that. So it's kind of cool. Again, there's there's Vega on the Sega Saturn side showing, uh, showing his name as Balrog in the Japanese version. I don't know if they did. I don't know if they changed the names because they were fearing a lawsuit, or if it was because of uh, Mike Tyson's uh, uh, criminal past at the time. I'm hoping it'll. I wish there was a way to skip through the ending here. But anyway. 
But when I, whenever I play um, games after Street Fighter 2, like if I play uh, Street Fighter 3 or Street Fighter 4, I actually enjoy playing uh, Ken over Ryu because of the the Dragon Punch. It's like the fiery Dragon Punch is a little bit better for the combos. So that's a little, little bit more fun. Again, I, I wasn't really a fan of 5. I thought 5 kind of needed a little more of an arcade mode. But then again, I, I still think they should make um, Street Fighter arcade machines, in my opinion. So, oh yeah, that's another thing, is when you beat the when you beat the game, it unlocks additional modes. But like I promised earlier, I want to show off the Super Nintendo and Genesis version comparison. Oh, you're nice and quiet now. Now I'm taking out for a walk. Of course, we got the Super Nintendo version on the bottom right, and then we got the Genesis version on the bottom left. And of course, Game Boy Advance version top top right, and Saturn version top left. And I'm playing the Game Boy Advance version. And this is actually taken from my early early video that I did. Uh, that's almost a couple of years now. Of course, Chun Li was one of the easiest characters to play. You just spam the kick move. Once it gets into the gameplay, you'll kind of see a little more comparison there. Of course, my copy of uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo on Super Nintendo was the Japanese copy, because I did not have an American copy at the time. But it was the same exact game. And the Super Nintendo and the Genesis versions, I mean, they were so close to being just as good. I mean, they were... I mean, the, the, they were so they were so good. I mean, it's whatever game of those two that you thought was better was basically dependent on what system you liked more. Like, if you thought the Genesis was a better system, then the Genesis version was better. If you thought the Super Nintendo was a better system, then the Super Nintendo version was better. So, I mean, they're, they're so close that you cannot even call it. But, uh, yeah, that is Street Fighter 2 Turbo, or I keep messing up the title. <laughs> that is Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the Game Boy Advance and being compared to the Sega Saturn version. Uh, let me know what version you like better or if you have never played it before or just whatever your general comments are down below. Um, again, uh, please like and subscribe if you want to help support this channel. And again, um, this is a small channel. It's still growing, trying to get it, uh, get it bigger. So if you could help share these videos, if you like what you see, that would be a huge, huge help. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe and please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video.